Let's go into design for reliability. So you, you say that a designer should really first think of the, the use case, the user scenario and the, the use environment, like who's going to use it, where, how, is it gonna be outside, inside, is it gonna be what temperature, is it gonna be blah, 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 right? And in let's say in big companies, would they typically start to put together some kind of risk analysis in a little bit of a formal manner or how, how would they handle that? Yeah, it's a, it's a good question because I, I think that it depends on, on the type of uh, company they are. For example, uh, big military contractors uh, or big companies that they have very heavy duty product that needs to be high reliable, highly reliable. Uh, those companies definitely think about reliability and quality and they try to start up immediately, right? Uh, with with the thinking about design for reliability, you know, for example, uh, they already have like a car fact car companies, you know, they they already know uh, or think about, for example, right up right from the start, uh, what kind of a life they want for the for their product and product reliability life, for example, ten years, thirty years, and so forth, and and then uh, they definitely have an experienced reliability engineering team that actually starts working on concepts of the reliability philosophy and even the theoretical reliability in, in terms of analyzing the life of the product, trying to design uh, for reliability right from the start, working with the design team and making sure the design team really understands uh, uh, what the end product should look like, how it should fare in the environment and in the hands of the user and, uh, and uh, how um, you should think about every aspect of the reliability in the design at the early stages of the design. And then usually um, uh, in startups and so forth, as, as I mentioned, sometimes they forget about it at the beginning, but then soon they realize that, okay, that we, we really need to get into this. And maybe at least uh, right after the prototype, they start thinking, okay, how can we make this product more reliable? And they realize that, okay, they had some components from suppliers that are not reliable uh, suppliers. Uh, they can't meet the, uh, the long-term goals of the design in terms of reliability life, in terms of reliability, uh, you know, uh, let's say environments that they, they have to go, temperature uh, variations and so forth. So they quickly start looking for uh, suppliers that can meet those uh, requirements. And, and so, uh, when it comes to design for reliability, I think that uh, majority of the teams need to, uh, let's say, at least in the development team, you know, they, they need to be aware of, as you said, the use case, uh, the field uh, uh, use case, and uh, uh, the customers, as well as uh, the environment that the, the product is going to be used. And then with the help of uh, reliability team, they need to choose uh, suppliers that can meet those reliability goals, uh, components that can meet those reliability goals, and then a design for reliability process that they have to take into account to make sure that the design itself is going to meet the reliability goals. And then so once you think about it, and I, and I mean like when I say design, design for reliability goals, for example, um, they might have to, uh, do a part count or uh, some kind of liability allocation or perhaps uh, viable analysis on the parts on the design itself and or do uh, some, uh, for example, uh, using the software and so forth, you can uh, come up with some kind of MP MTBF analysis. Uh, at least it's an estimate. It, it gives you some ideas of where the product is going to uh, start up in terms of design for reliability. And then uh, you start working on um, uh, designing test cases that can actually uh, mimic the environment and the use case, uh, the worst case analysis of the environment and the use case. And then in this case, you are going to be able to uh, detect and maybe even predict and or uh, uh, find uh, early defects that could happen. And, and that's the, really the key for design for reliability because you really want to find those uh, serious defects that could happen in the field 
way early in the design. And once you find it, for example, in the, in the EBT, DBT, then you have fixed it. And once you fixed it, you're not gonna see those in the field again. But most often what happens is that, uh, I think definitely one of these things happens. Uh, either you have an on a, not so much experienced reliability team that they don't design a, a test case that can actually find the issues. Uh, for example, the test case could be loose, too loose, uh, and uh, basically it passes everything. That's not good. Uh, and or you could have completely the reverse side. You, you have a test case that it fails everything and, and uh, it's, also, it's almost like a test of failure and that's not good. So a good experience reliability engineer knows exactly where the fine line is, where it meets uh, the operational goals, but at the same time has a design uh, has a reliability margin so that it, it actually doesn't go all the way to test a failure, but it uh, makes sure the product is uh, tested for that unusual uh, environment and or uh, use case. Right. And just to make sure people uh, get it, when you say the reliability objectives, it might be something like when used in these circumstances by this type of people, that many times per week, for example, um, it will last, you know, it, it will not fail for the first three years, you know, uh, right. 95% of the time, right? That is wonderful. I'm glad so you, you mentioned that because that, that is, that is what, one of the fundamental uh, ways of creating that test case. And uh, mm. I think a keyboard is a very good example of that. You know, someone who is using the keyboard in the office versus someone who's using the keyboard for gaming. Uh, yeah, it's know, quite different. <laughs> yeah. right? Banging quite different. on the keys and uh, using it for a longer period of time versus someone who's just sitting nicely and, and uh, you know, very safely. So I think um, what, you, what you mentioned is an excellent example of how you create the test cases that meets the right uh, use case environment. And then all of these, a combination of all of these really come up to be DFX for reliability DFR. And in, team, in terms of the design, you wanna make sure that, for example, if it's a mobile phone, uh, the design team understands that, you know, this thing is gonna fall. And how do I protect the display from breaking when it falls? Right, because it, it's all about fitting back to the, 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 the product design and seeing, okay, maybe we picked the wrong component here. Maybe we need to add, um, but some redundancy here because this might fail and, and so on and so forth, right? Oh, I and mean, when it falls on that angle, this is really uh, easy to break. Actually, uh, maybe we need to change the, this, this component a bit or something. Yes, yes, that, right. that makes like sense. In old days, you know, old days, you know, you, you design in the, uh, the display, nobody even thought about the fact that you could drop the phone. In fact, they said, no, you shouldn't drop it. If, if you drop it, you're going to break it because it's glass. Of course, it's going to break, you know. Uh, but then when you started thinking about design for reliability, you said, no, well, uh, is there something we can do to pre prevent the glass from breaking? How about creating some kind of an edge to protect the glass and so forth? And so this way of thinking it started uh, making the design thing, oh, maybe, maybe we should do that, let's see what happens. And then they realized that really improved the, uh, the reliability just on, on that one little design improvement. And then they started uh, working on another, another, and so on. And so really design for reliability means how can I think of ways to improve the design so that the, this, the so when, for example, the product is being dropped or, uh, or you know, uh, water splash on it. How can I make it more uh, reliable so that it can still uh, work after a small splash of water, for example? Mm -hmm.